Very good evening and welcome to the live Rupani channel. I must greet A very good evening indeed. I am Jai Jupraarachi. Behatins for this new. A digital project titled Sourcing Control of Nineteen. Bank means measures taken to control pandemic condition in Sri Lanka. Numberfully cured COVID-19 cases increased to 1,258. 274 new patients have identified. Mission to supply single food items without shortage to all regions. Provision of Pfizer to be expedited to the 25 districts in effect today. Declared winner of the U.S. presidential election appears delaying. More than 7 billion rupees to provide relief to people are going current. Treasury gets paid to allocate more funds according to need. On to those and other stories until now and starting off with the stories. President Gautabe Rajapaksha says the screening of masses could not be conducted only through the imposition of curfew. He says that all must be paid in their daily activities by adopting health guidelines. The President made the remark occasion of introduction of the sensitive digital project under the direction of the Information and Communication Technology Representatives Institute. The president said that the country could be alone, however wearing a face mask is necessary. So he's washing hands and keeping a distance. People should bear in their minds that these are the precautions that help lead the country forward. He also said those engaged in self-employment and business always tell him not to lock down. President, those who earn livelihood by selling rice, vegetables, fish, fruits are severely victimized today. Those who lose monthly salaries in state operated institutions are also affected. The closure of the country for 10 days would take at least one year to cover the losses. The president also stated that ministers, doctors, and politicians should always think about others. The impact of closing schools on the economy, health, and education should be considered. The president said that there are who fail to adhere to proper instructions. जीवित <laughs> President Unat, Minister Unat, Desha Palakya Unat, Doctors La Mega Parikshana Karanaya Unat, Hamakin Ikma, Samasta, Mega Aragana Una Mega Kriakarana, Beha Kanying Kapata Kitara Kita Karan, Api Kola Wahanda Kiata Heki, Api Balanona is Kola Walati B me impact Dugana Kapatika Kina, Ikna Mega Patting, Sauke Patting, Me Hameka Kimma, who impact Nama me me ratak ni wahagani ni me ochchara kiwa janatawata hari amakne meka the objective of the swen city mo project is to simultaneously give solutions to the problems of dating relationships among common factors and introduction of movements of disease carriers chair the information and communication technology representatives institute chant the silva has introduced the new project with the covid control task force under the leadership of the president met this morning the project will be implemented through simple method to enable all institutions to the state sector relating to commons dealing with COVID-19 prevention task. The QR cell is where the institution could be found by entering the website staysafe.gov.lk. The project is scheduled to be implemented from next Sunday. The QR symbol could be by furnishing details of name, address and telephone numbers of the owner via mobile phone. MPs, ministers and members of the COVID-19 task force have attended discussion. You're watching the news on Rupwani and still on local news. The World Bank country director of Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka, Fais Haddad Zavo, commended Sri Lankan government on how it has dealt with the coronavirus outbreak. He made these remarks when he called on Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa yesterday. The meeting was held at Nepal. Expressing deep gratitude for the relationship that Sri Lanka and the World Bank share, World Bank country director Haddad congratulated the Prime Minister not only on the election victory but on how Sri Lanka has managed the pandemic. He was accompanied by the World Bank manager for Maldives and Sri Lanka, Chio Kanda. The Lankan delegation thanked the World Bank for the many years of close cooperation and assured that the 
EU government will continue that relationship. It is also appreciated that the bank for various assistance programs during the pandemic. The World Bank was the first donor agency to come forward with the assistance when the pandemic first occurred early this year. The country director said the World Bank will assess how best to support Sri Lanka and to see how the organization can turn this crisis into an opportunity. When he asked about Sri Lanka's priority, Prime Minister Rajapaksa responded by pointing out several key sectors, including economic development, roads, drinking water, sanitation and agriculture, set to be prioritized by the government of the current outbreak situation under control. The World Bank country director highlighted on Sri Lanka's Ayurveda sector, noted that there is a great international demand for Ayurveda products. Another area that was discussed was the film tourism. With a well-developed tourism sector, World Bank country director Haddad Zawaz said a possible next step for the countries like Sri Lanka is to increase tourism even further and is to attract the entertainment industry from around the world to use Sri Lanka as the location for productions. Studies have shown that seeing a location in a movie or television can have a significant impact on the number of tourists visiting that location. The Prime Minister expressed an interest on further collaborating with the World Bank in this area. Meanwhile, Ambassador of France in Sri Lanka, Eric Vatu, the Rajapaksa yesterday evening at Temple Trees. During the courtesy call, the French Ambassador also congratulated the Prime Minister on the election victory and spoke highly about the government's handling on the pandemic. Ambassador Labatu said that the low COVID-19 related death rate in Sri Lanka is indicative of the good health infrastructure that Sri Lanka has invested throughout the years. Prime Minister Rajapaksa said that the government's first priority is to deal with bringing the pandemic situation under control. Thereafter, the focus will be on economic development, the Prime Minister added. In addition, France is keen to be a part of the development of the Hambantha report. Ambassador Labatu said that France is also in the market for more Sri Lankan products, indicating a potential to increase trade relations between the two countries. And here's the local update of the COVID-19 pandemic. 277 more fully cured COVID-19 patients have left the hospitals today. In while President Gotabe Rajapaksha has ordered authorities to bring back to Sri Lanka, 40 Sri Lankans are presently being detained in 156 houses of Saudi Arabia. Head of the National Action Center for the Prevention of the Spread of COVID-19, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva says that detention has been focused at the meeting last afternoon on the immediate measures to be taken in this regard. Strong impacts has been made on this research and employment opportunities for Lankans stranded in Saudi Arabia due to the coronavirus expansion. It has been revealed that the meeting and the necessary measures are being taken to airlift to the island. These persons are utilizing at least two trips each day. The Army commander further said that the program is also underway to direct them to PCR tests in groups, focusing more attention on the groups are more valuable to be affected with the viral disease. Among the issues that have come under discussion include provision of 5,000 rupee allowance, breaking of medicines to the residents of parents, handing over a package of essential food items saved at 1,000 rupees, and the speedy conclusion of the hotel's quarantine process. Director General of Health Services Dr. Asayla Gunavardhana and many specialist physicians in the health sector have attended the meeting. And 74 COVID-19 patients identified today. 267 out of this number were close contacts of patients of the Paleogode COVID cluster. The other seven persons were those undergoing quarantine at the quarantine centers. Commissioner General of Prisons Tusara Upoldenia says that as a result of the protective health measures taken, it has been possible to prevent the inclusion of COVID-19 disease into the prisons. A COVID-19 patient was found from Kartankudi in Batiklo as well. The place where he has stayed in Abrar in Kartankudi was isolated. Although who have maintained contacts with him have been quarantined. A COVID-19 patient found in Andadola in Balapitiya was reported to have attended a funeral in his doctor in Ambalangoda. The public health inspector in Ambalangoda conducting operations in search of these associates. Measures have been taken to temporarily close down Nanoy Railway Engineer's office. The cargo transport train operated on the upcountry line did not stop at this railway station until further notice. An employee at the Nanoy Railway's office was reported to have contracted COVID-19 disease. 43 close associates of the patients were subjected to self quarantine. A person who purchased fish from Paliagoda Fish Market and engaged in fish trading in Gilimale, Ratnapura, and seven members of his family 
female afflicted with the COVID-19 disease. PCR tests were conducted on 56 close associates of these patients. The Department of Motor Traffic says that insurance or revenue loans in the Western Province will be further suspended. Facilities have been provided to obtain revenue licenses by downloading to the website www.motortraffic.wp.gov.lk. The Ministry of Health and the Sri Lanka Postal Service have embarked upon a joint program to provide medicinal drugs to the doorstep of the patients who do not have adequate medicine, which they will obtain monthly from government clinics. The program is to be implemented with effect from tomorrow. It is necessary for the patients to provide their residential address and telephone numbers. Those who have not provided their correct address along with their clinic's books should contact the hospital from which they obtain medicine to update their information. The police say that the law will be strictly enforced on violators of quarantine curfew. Meanwhile, the medical officer division of Pannal in Kununagala was exempted from the isolated status with effect from today. Six grams of our divisions in the Pannal division were isolated yesterday with the detention of the five COVID-19 patients. The Northwestern Health Services Director's Office decided to withdraw isolation upon conducting of PCR tests on patients. A quarantine curfew is in effect in 112 police stations in the Western Province. It will force till the 9th of this month. In addition, quarantine curfews are imposed on the Kurunagala Municipal Council and Galigamu Pradesh Sabha limits, as well as in the police divisions of Piapitiya, Ali Agoda Giri, Himmatagama and Bulatko Pitiya. The police says that the search operations at entry and exit locations where curfews are imposed are being conducted continuously. Inspections are conducted at entry sessions in the Western Province today as well. Search operations were carried out without interruptions in the Columbus City today as well. And 14 police monitoring vehicles have been deployed to observe quarantine curfew in the Western Province with effect from today. Permission has been granted for employees in 106 institutions use their official ID as curfew permits when engaging in essential official duties. Facilities have been provided for the people in the curfew imposed areas to purchase essential food items and medicine. And the 24th corona-related death in the island was reported today. The disease is a woman in number 13. The 79-year-old victim was reported to have died in a recent day. It has been revealed in the post-mortem that she was a COVID-19 patient. It has also been found that she was suffering from in home diseases as a resident more than one month. The most dangerous reason attributed to her death was cited as a heart attack due to affliction of COVID-19. The death of a 78-year-old male in the Colombo 13 area has been reported. He has passed away due to severe injuries sustained to his head to a collapse upon admission to the National Hospital. It has been identified that he was a COVID-infected person. During the post-mortem, however, the Director General of Health Service has stated that it is considered this his death was not caused due to the COVID-19 infection. And here's the world update the COVID-19 pandemic. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases worldwide surpassed million and the death toll exceeded 1.215 in the last 24 hours. The number of COVID-19 cases in the Americas had made up near half of the global total reached 20.8 million. Europe and Southeast Asia reported more than 1.5 million and 4 million cases respectively. Even countries including Germany, Italy and France are facing a worsening COVID-19 epidemic situation forcing government to impose strict restrictions. New COVID-19 infections in Germany remain near the record level and increased by 16,000 cases to a total of more than 507,000. The death toll increased by 149 on the day, bringing the toll to 10,883. On Monday, Germany entered its second COVID-19 lockdown, which is a partial monthly lockdown during November. Italy reported nearly 760,000 confirmed cases that after reporting 20,244 new in the past 24 days. A total of 353 rather new deaths reported, hitting a single day record since May, 2000, May 6th, with the death toll increasing up to 9,412. Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte on Monday announced trigger measures to contain the novel coronavirus. The new decree to be implemented starting from May includes a nationwide night curfew and a compulsory face mask wearing and not marching with more than six guests. France is on the fourth of the second nationwide lockdown to stem the wave of the epidemic. A total of 854 people lost their lives to COVID-19 in the past 24 hours in France, bringing the 
the death toll in the country since the outbreak of the epidemic to 38,289. In the meantime, 6,330 infections were confirmed yesterday, breaking the cumulative toll of cases to 1.5 million. The United States topped the world confirmed coronavirus cases and the nationwide case load amounted to 9.3 million, with the death toll reaching 232,638. The cumulative number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in America topped more than 11 million at present, with the total case count in Brazil ranks third in the world in terms of case load surpassing 5.5 million. India, which is the second worst hit country in the world in terms of the number of infections, added 38,110 new cases in 24 hours, totally tally to 8.5 including a death toll of 123,097. And meanwhile, Media Minister Heli Rambukwell says that the government is compelled to present the most challenging budget in recent times. He was attending ceremonies held in connection with the opening of several development projects in the electorate today. Reconstruction of 28 kilometers of roads with carpeting in the Kundasal electorate commenced today. Thereafter, progress to reconstruction of the Hagala Uyanbatta Community Hall and the The Minister has also inspected the construction work on Puttaya Muladradran Playground in Kundasale and the in the town development. The government has taken measures to distribute the food items via economic centers without shortage. Distributing food items from three economic centers in the Colombo district has commenced today. Our correspondents have said that stocks of essential food items, including vegetables and fruits, were distributed from the economic centers in Nanipita, Malana, and Liandala. There has been a congestion in the market due to the advice of the wholesale traders to purchase goods. However, health guidelines have been followed in the issuance of items. Traders at the Narim Economic Center said that more than 100,000 kilos of vegetables were sold by this afternoon. Agriculture Minister Mahindran Dalut Gamage and State Minister Shashindra Rajas engaged in an inspection tour at the Narim Economic Center today. The ministers have inquired the problems of the traders on this occasion. Minister Gamage and the State Minister Shashindra Rajapaksa has arrived at the closed down Mira Economic Center and looked into the possibility of reopening the center for trading. The center was closed due to the identification of several COVID 19 patients. PCR tests are to be conducted on 60 employees at the Economic Center tomorrow. The Economic Center is scheduled to be subjected to sterilization on Saturday. Minister Mindananda Lugamage has let on stated that the Center will be reopened on next Monday. Exposure of the economic centers for bulk trade, fallen prices of upcountry vegetables are in the process of being restored. Vegetable distribution at Capital Special Economic Center has recommenced. The Ministry of Trade says that there are adequate food stocks in Colombo sales centers. Traders from all parts of the island have come to purchase food stocks. Minister Bandula Gudamarta was engaged in an inspection tour at the Colombo Fort Wholesale Trade Center. Meanwhile, the outcome of this presidential election is life edge with Donald Trump and his rival Joe Biden. And key swing states, a number of key battleground states are still up in air, including Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. The magic number of electoral votes is 270. Democrat nominee for the U.S. presidential election 2020, Joe Biden, has received 220 electoral votes and his Republican rival. An incumbent Donald Trump has received 213 after Nebraska split its electoral votes between the two presidential hopefuls. Earlier today, President Trump claimed to have won and vowed to launch a Supreme Court challenge, baselessly alleging fraud. While his support Biden has, he was on track to victory. Millions of voters remain uncounted and no candidate credibly claim victory. Yet, with the nation wide on the edge, the final result may not be known today. More than 100 million people can't ballots in early voting before election day said the U.S. and calls for the highest turnout in a century. President Trump has defied the pre-election polls better than predicted, but his opponent Biden is still in the racetrack on the overall result is not yet clear. In this U.S. election, voters decide state-level contest rather than on overall single nationwide one. The elected president 
A candidate must win at least 270 votes in that what is called the Electoral College. Each of U.S. states obtains a certain number of votes partially based on its population and there are a total of 138 on grabs. The president is projected to have held the most win in Florida, a major boost to his re-election bid, control of Congress, the two-chamber legislature it also at stake, as well as their White House Republicans are vying to hang on to a majority in the Senate, the House of Representatives is expected to stay in democratic hands. Meanwhile, the Democrats and Republicans continue to battle for control of the Senate in half a dozen closely fought races today. U.S. Democrats and Republicans both flipped Senate seats in Tuesday's elections. As of early Wednesday, news outlets reported that Democrat John Hickenlooper won his race in Colorado, while Doug Jones, the most vulnerable incumbent Democrat, lost as expected to Republican challenger Tommy Tuberville in Alabama. In order to take the Senate majority, Democrats need to win four seats, or three if Democratic challenger Joe Biden wins the presidential election. That would give Vice President Kamala Harris a tie-breaking vote. Republicans currently hold a majority of 53 seats in the 100 seat chamber. How it will look after the election may come down to 14 competitive races, including 12 Republican held seats and two by Democrats. The ultimate makeup of the Senate may not be known for some time. In Georgia, a Republican held seat is now headed to a January runoff after neither candidate secured a majority. Eight other races remain to be called, including in May where moderate Republican Senator Susan Collins' popularity has waned. She's faced criticism for failing to be a moderating force in it. So far, Republican incumbents Lindsey Graham and John Cornyn fended off Democratic challenges in South Carolina and Texas. And, as expected in Kentucky, Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell won re-election. A Democrat victory in the Senate could lead to a new era in U.S. politics if the party holds the House of Representatives and captures the White House. The Salem PLP and the National Water Supply and Drainage Board have also contributed to the Itukama COVID-19 Health and Social Security Fund. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has handed over the relevant checks to the President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The Ceylon Bank PLC has handed over 5 million rupees and the National Water Supply and Drainage Board 15.16 million rupees to the fund. The Finlay's Colombo Limited has also contributed a sum of 10 million rupees. The check has also been handed over to the President. The total of Itukura COVID-19 Health and Social Security Fund has increased to 1,693 million rupees. Funds could be forwarded to the fund through checks and telegraphs as well as through the website www.itukama.org. It should also be directed via the number hash 207 hash. For the details obtained over the telephone number 076 070 or 022 You can also call on 012 or 024 And meanwhile, the first meeting of the Parliamentary Council established through the 20th Constitution Amendment has taken place today. The meeting is presided over by Speaker Minan Mahindaya Vardhana. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha, Opposition Leader Sajit Prepadasa, Prime Minister's Representative Doug Devander, and Opposition Leader's Representative Kabir Hashim have attended the event. In addition, Secretary General of Parliamentary Dhanakadasanayaka, Chief of Staff of Parliament Neil Idhavala were present. Speaker Mahindya Pabevartana on this occasion has invited all parties to act in cross collaboration. General Secretary Dhanakadasanayaka, on the advice of the Speaker, has explained on the legal framework the procedure of the Parliamentary Council according to the 20th Constitutional Amendment. The members have agreed on measures to be followed in the future. Next session, the Parliamentary Council is scheduled to be convened at 10 a.m. on the 10th of this month. And the donation has government has handed over a sum of more than 7.8 million rupees to the relevant sectors in the provide to relief to masses in the quarantine procedure. The Treasury says it is a decade more months upon request of district cities and other groups. The funds have been reserved to provide a bag of relief items to families under quarantine in their cases. A 5,000 rupee relief allowance has been allocated for each of the low income families residing in areas where a quarantine is being. Post. A sum of 2,720 million rupees 
reserved for the Gambar district, a sum of 233 million rupees for the Kambar district, 1310 million rupees has been allocated for the Kalutra district in this regard. In addition, 469 billion rupees have been allocated for the 5000 rupee allowance to be provided to the people in the Nagala district. 128 million rupees have been provided for the Bangalore district in this connection. The government spent up to a sum of 6.9 billion rupees for payment of 1000 rupees. Government has also spent 336 million the provision of bags or dried food to be distributed among peoples of going self quarantine in 20 districts. The allowance has also been provided to families in the home division of secretariat divisions today. A 10,000 rupee package of essential items sufficient for two weeks to distribute to quarantine families in Vidima regional secretariat under the third stage of the program. Sacks of dried rations valued at 10,000 rupees are provided for 2,052 families undergoing self quarantine in Brunagala. A sum of 6 billion rupees have been set aside. The Gorakal District says that 5,000 rupees has been provided in all the years where the quarantine of the has been imposed. Provision of a bag of relief items in food valued at 10 rupees people undergo house quarantine in the located in the district. 1,014 families in the district have been subject to providing the items be provided under two stages. State Minister at Law Mohammed Darshan Adiba has instructed the Secretary to issue fertilizer with a shortage. The 24th amidst the problem. In with supplies has reached the harbor after a considerable period. Loading 60,000 metric tons of fertilizer is being conducted at the Club Harbor, and the ship is scheduled to arrive within the next two days. President has focused on the problems faced by farmers to fertilize shortage. As a result, the government has taken a policy decision on importation of chemical fertilizer. The government is to expand organic fertilizer usage and to minimize the application of chemical fertilizer. Upon fulfillment of this target, it is to minimize importation of chemical fertilizer and to see local mechanism to use fertilizer requirement within the country itself. Daily measures taken to streamline fertilizer distribution will follow up unit of State Minister and Attorney Law Mohammed Darshidilla. Preparation of the Katina, which is to be filled at the State Katina Puja ceremony, place in historic Somati, has been completed by 50%. According to ancient tradition prevailed since the times of the kings, the Kati robe made out of corporate is customary of the Mahasanga, recalling the heat. The village in the Adrigiri Bapura area engaged in preparation of Katina robe at present using hand loop machines. A single piece of robe is scheduled to take place in Ramavati sacred site on the procession of the 7th. During the state Kati Puja, will be offered to the Buddhist monks on the guidance of the incumbent of Ramavati Raja Mahavihare, Venerable Mahamune Sri Sumangala Thera, and the follow-up. The same crop will be in public club using local raw materials. This is the first time a Kina Puja ceremony will be held under the state patronage after the era of King Parakram Bahu II. Yeah. And with tonight's news, do the same time. Good night.